Uh, welcome to Strat Chat. So this is my Martin, and we are going to do uh, another another challenge. We're going to become well. The, the aim is that we're going to try and become the Khan of Khans, starting as a duchy in the independent kingdom of uh, Barashia. In actual fact, the kingdom hasn't been formed. There are a number of uh, number of duchies there. Uh, if you've seen the analysis, the the kingdom analysis, you'll you'll have a pretty good idea um, where where things are at the moment. Uh, we need a hundred counties. We need to be an emperor. We need to be a uh, living legend. Uh, there's a whole range of things that we that we need to do. But if we pull it off, we end up with a superb quality Mongol horde of 32,000. Uh, we'll be able to take over empires, whole kingdoms, whole empires in, um, in, in one go. It will be amazing. So the idea is we're going to become Khan of Khans. So it's an 867 start. I didn't say that before, but uh, it's an 867 start, and we are going to create our own ruler. But we are going to be the, uh, our realm is going to be uh, Dauria. So create your own ruler. Um, a number of things to to think about really is we need actually quite a, a, a quite a broad skill set for this for this leader. I want him to be more of a military leader. I want him to lead in battle. Um, I know there's risks there, and you know we'll want to get ourselves an, an heir relatively quickly so that the the, the, the game isn't basically uh, uh, you know ruined uh, or, or even over perhaps by him getting killed quickly. But um, I want him to be the military ruler, but I also need somebody who's going to be able be able to have a reasonable sized domain. We might get a lot of that from um, a careful choice of wife, um, but he needs a decent domain. We also, in order to be, <laughs> we're going to be so next door to this sort of huge empire that we want to take over, I think we need, you know, a fair bit of intrigue as as well. You know, diplomacy is always useful. You know, there's this. It would be useful to have a quite a, a lead with quite broad sort of skills. Um, we're going to. I don't want to be uh, sexist here, but we are going to go with a man. I think 25 years old is good. It gives us just a few. Mind you, should we go 16? I always tempted by 16, just get those extra points. Do you know, I'm gonna go for that. So we, we, we want a military leader, so let's go for it. Now, uh, tempted, of course, to go for, for, for brilliant strategist, but I think we're gonna go for skilled tactician, saving those 40 points because we want this kind of more all-round kind of guy. The next thing that I, I wanna uh, say is, I'm gonna name this after my one and only patron. Um, I've not, not pushed the fact that I've got a patron. I don't kind of really feel like I've kind of deserved patrons yet, but uh, thank you very much to to this uh, gentleman. So this uh, first character is going to be Tim, and he is going to be from the house of uh, of, of Bodger. So very thank you. Uh, thank you very much to, uh, to uh, Tim Bodger. And um, I've just checked his name. His name is Tom. Apologies to 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 Tom. I'm just going to call um, Khan of Khans. So let's, uh, let's let's finish that and let's change this name to Tom. Okay. Right. So we are a skilled tactician. Personality-wise, I think we have to be brave, don't we? We have to be brave. Now this makes us. Um, much uh, much better in battle, uh, increases our prowess, but it massively increases our chance of dying in battle. So we, you know, we do need to bear that um, in mind. I quite like stubborn. Um, that's going to help us with our uh, stewardship, which is also you know, keen for us to have a high stewardship score. Always tempted by ambitious. It's really, really good value for money because you get a plus one in every single... Um, attribute, but um, it, it gives you stress every time you give away counties. We are going to be giving away uh, counties, I suspect. So I quite like Deceitful. It's a big Im improvement to uh, Intrigue. Uh, we lose a bit of uh, Diplomacy. We could, we could easily just get that back by, by you know hitting the, the plus button. I think the, the thing that's putting me off it, really, is the loss of Piety, because because I am going to go down here and get Wise Man, because it is a virtue in this tradition. Yeah, wise man. Yes, I do want to have uh, reasonably good piety income in this playthrough. 
So I think we're going to go for Arrogant. Uh, that one prestige per turn is going to help us uh, to, 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 to pay the kind of maintenance cost of um, you know, a somewhat larger army, uh, just make life a little bit easier for us in the um, early game. Now I've still got a lot of points. Um, have a quick looking at the other traits and see if there's anything that I, um, that I fancy. So I really fancy Overseer. Uh, it makes me a better soldier, but it also gives me stewardship so, and, and control growth. I think we've got to go for, we've got to go for that. And the other one is that, you know, we are tribal. I'm a military leader. Why don't I go for um, the one that gives you better raiding? Reeve, I think it's called Reaver. I uh, shall find out in a moment. Uh, raid speed up 100%, hostile county attrition down uh, 75%. I think we're definitely going to go for that. We've still got quite a lot of points because we're so youthful. So um, I think we want to get... Diplomacy at least up to 10. So is that expensive? That's not too bad. I think we definitely intrigue up to 10. And let's go for learning. Oh, right. What can we take off? Um, I think prowess. We're not going to be engaging in kind of much in the way of hand to hand combat. That gives us exactly, exactly 400. I'm not sh I'm never sure if that makes us a little bit more vulnerable in battle, but I'm going to be taking the um, the options early on that makes me less vulnerable um, in battle. I'm also going to be getting married and getting a kid, so hopefully there isn't going to be any trouble with succession if uh, if something untoward does happen. So let's finalise my, my character and let's play. So my first, my first thoughts are that I obviously need to become the Kyrgyz car Carnate, I need to control all of that really if I'm to achieve this uh, greatest of Khans. Um, I'm going to need to yeah, exalt among men, I think is going to come because I'm going to be, you know, f fighting lots of wars. I think that will come naturally. Um, empire rank, that's going to take time. Um, and really, the nearest empire is the Mongol Empire, that's the one that I need. Um, tribal government, of course, we, so we've got all the other, the other things here. Um, actually, to be fair, realm size of 100 or more. Okay. So I need, really need to incorporate all of this into, into my realm eventually. There's Mongolia. Interesting, the Kyrgyz Khanate goes beyond the uh, borders of the uh, Mongol Empire. And actually, huge kingdom here, Mongolia as well. So I think there are two kingdoms I want to be aiming for. I want to get Buryashia because that's not at the moment a part of this carnate here. So I want to try and get Buryashia and become the king of that. And then I'm going to go for Ang Angara because much of Anger is also not in the Kyrgyz Khanate. So what I'm hoping to do is take enough of that without having to you know, like get claims, uh, etc. as a kind of an independent ruler, if you like, take them over, uh, build a, that second kingdom and give it to a son. Uh, and that's going to, and then of course I'm going to ally him and then bring all of us into this Kyrgyz Khanate empire, become, uh, make him our, our liege lord. And once he's our liege lord and we have two kingdoms, we're going to be a very, very uh, powerful faction within, uh, within the, this empire. And the plan really is to make this this sent this kingdom here, which is going to be mine, that make this into into a real sort of like power base. It, it's by no means perfect. Um, you know, you wouldn't choose it perhaps if you could choose anywhere in the world as a great place to develop. But it's what I've got, okay? And that's where we're going to start from. We'll probably split, smooth the capital if and when we we uh, we get to rule over this like huge empire. The other same thing is once I'm in there, I'm going to start trying to use my, I, I might switch to the, um, you know, because obviously I'm going to go military, but I might switch to the intrigue lifestyle because I want to have, well, if we go and have a look, I want to have um, truth is relative uh, and I can fabricate hooks. And what I shall do is I shall uh, create a, what I should do is I create a faction against my liege lord, um, ideally to you know, make me the emperor or possibly to dissolve the empire and I'll use those hooks, I'll try and get hooks on some of the other dukes, some of the powerful dukes, maybe there's a king there, get hooks on them and force them to, to join my faction, overthrow the emperor, either install myself or break up the empire 
So it's quite easy for me to take it over um, in um, in sort of big chunks, hopefully sort of like duke, duke them size pieces. So that's the plan. Right, I'm going to have a quick look at my military because obviously I'm going to be, I think almost certainly I'm going to be attacking uh, Kotara first. Now Kotara is, has uh, three county titles. Uh, it's all sorts of reasons why this is going to be difficult. If you just have a quick look at religion, I'm in this area here of Tengriism, but these people have a different religion, Termic, and it is, I believe, hostile. It's hostile. It means it's going to be more difficult for me to uh, usurp kingdoms from, uh, sorry, duchy titles and uh, from other from other people. I'm basically going to have to take an control of every single uh, county. So Cotter has three. Now normally in normal scheme of things if I own two of those kingdom, uh, counties I should be able to form the duchy. But because it's a different religion it won't, it won't, it just won't work. Um, so I'm going to have to capture all three of them. And there's also the possibility that left behind I'm going to have unhappy citizens um, and so it, it probably I'm going to end up using uh, my, what, what do we call it in this culture, my high shaman to convert these people to, uh, to, to Tengriism, which is, uh, which is our religion. Um, obviously it takes a very, very long time. You know, we want a nice, good quality high shaman. We're just going to have to see about that. The other thing, and this is going to be a pain, I'm going to have to take these one by uh, one. There's going to be a long cooldown period in between. Uh, I now need to just think about which one am I going to attack first. Uh, none of these people have alliances at the moment. That might change. None of them have alliances at the moment, um, and none of them have a liege lord. He has 994 men. Um, uh, the best of them are uh, light horsemen. Okay, about this guy. Similar size, similar 100 light horsemen. Was he 100? Yeah, 100 light horsemen. we got to smash them to pieces with the, um, the building of... Uh, yeah, so uh, all of these are good... Good target. So this is the strongest one. Um, he's got uh, some light footmen as well. Otherwise, he's the same sort of size as the others. So let's have a quick look at our own. Well, I'll tell you what. First thing, let's choose a lifestyle because I know I want martial. So because I'm 16, I don't have any um, martial perks available yet. Um, I am going to go for... I'm tempted to go for this one because it would be nice to see the control growth growing. And I'm going to be using my marshal to train my knights, so he's not going to be available for uh, control growth. So I think that's, that's the way that we're going to go. And the first one that we want is actually going to be Bellum Justum to reduce the uh, Casus Belli cost, because it's going to cost us prestige to attack all of these, um, all of these people, because they're of a different religion to us. Now, my second one will be stalwart leader, and then we'll look at improving our military either through going up uh, the uh, the gallant tree to get eventually to household guard, or you know picking up some of these that should be which would be very very useful uh, perks. Let's have a quick look at the military. Right, okay, so we've got four hundred um, men at arms. We've got the capability of building two more, so we've got light footmen. We've got horses, and we're mostly facing light horsemen. None of these counter light horsemen. I'm very tempted to just drop this. It doesn't counter any of the forces that we've that we've seen. Um, there's a maintenance cost of one th of a third of uh, one prestige per. Um, well, it's, it's, yeah, when when they're raised, and it's point one normally. I suppose point one isn't a lot. Perhaps it's a bit a bit too soon to be doing that. What can we build? Create men at arms. This is what I want to do. I want to invest in top quality. But also, I want to experiment with having a real kind of like mixture of troops. So I'm going to get horse archers, because you've got to have horse archers, haven't you? I'm also going to have some armoured footmen. And I am going to lose these. because I want some pikemen, because clearly I have come across um, lots of, uh, you know, lo lots of these people have got, have got horsemen and pikemen will, um, will counter them. Now, 
this is kind of inefficient because I'm having to pay for four regiments. It doesn't matter how big your regiments are, whether I'm all the way up to full size five or whether there's only one, um, I, you have to pay uh, for the whole regiment, the kind of the upkeep costs. But I think quite quickly, I'm gonna start increasing the size, size of these. And it's worth it because we're gonna see some success on the battlefield because with this mixture, we counter almost everything that they're likely to have. We've got quality, We've got the, the we yeah, we got it all. We got it all here. These these two top quality. Right. Right, next thing I want to do is I want to think about my own marriage. <clears throat> okay, first thing I want to look for is prestige gain. Now, our culture has a trait which doubles the prestige gain from marriages. So we have a young lady here. If I marry her, I get two hundred. That's enough for another regiment. I kinda quite like that idea but I think some of the others are probably similar. Okay, so which would give me the best mixture of things? I mean, do I still get 200 with her? No, so I definitely don't wanna be losing 200. So if we think of, um, but um, Orbi has, seems to have a better shot at uh, stewardship. It's actually, she might be quite good over time. So let's, let's take her, send that proposal. Right, let's have a look at my council. I mean, he could not be worse. He could not be worse. I haven't got anything amazing to swap with, so I'm gonna do a few marriages and see if we can find anything better. Is there anybody here for any of these um, that's half decent, or a half decent, um, half decent marshal? I think we're gonna be looking for better through marriages. Particularly need a good marshal. We definitely need a good a spy master. The chancellor would do for now, so he's not important. Right, let's have a look at who we've got available to get married. Let's start with the men. Okay, so all of these um, individuals are unmarried. So having them in rank order, let's have a look at this guy here. So he's 52, quite an elderly man. I wonder if he can attract a good court physician. So the short answer is, is, is no, he can't. Can he find us a good... Yeah, I mean, she would make a very good spy master. Okay, take her. Uh, next guy down. Let's see if we can find people, some women with high learning. 15. I mean, it's not amazing, but it's better than nothing. And we'll have a couple, couple like that, I think. No harm in a spare spy, is there? Okay. Right, we'll just have a look at the women. I've only got three. Now that's just sad. Okay, do that. Uh, just make sure that I've reset defaults. Matrilineal, get rid of that. Um, I mean, what a good chancellor. Um, not that much, not really that much better than the one I've got. Mediocre. 16, okay, so let's, I think we can't. Let's just have a look at the guy. Yeah, I think we can't not have this as our chancellor. So send that proposal. Right, the other ladies are all going to be in the business of finding guys who are good at soldiering. So let's go for prowess. This guy's 33, he's excellent. Absolutely excellent. Go for that one. C, prowess, not bad. Do you know what? He's spindly, he's spindly. Okay, so this guy here is going to be working on uh, foreign affairs because I want him to be getting me some uh, some prestige. Uh, this guy, for now, we're just gonna leave on collect taxes. Later on, we might use him differently. We're gonna put this one on disrupt schemes for now, and we're gonna put, as always, we're gonna put this guy on train commanders. Levies, I'm, I don't want to be particularly important in the game. I want to quickly be fighting wars without them, except perhaps, you know, the, the, the really big conflicts. Uh, fabricate claim on county, um, or well, it adds absolutely nothing, but we're going to get a new high shaman in just a moment, so let's leave him on that and we'll see what happens. Right, we're just going to uh, hit play long enough to get the marriages in. So first thing to notice is I do have an alliance um, and, uh, and that's 
right in the heart of the uh, of the empire, a reasonably good ally in terms of their strength. So that's good news. I just hope he doesn't go to war too much. But as he's got a, a, a liege lord, I think he probably won't be calling me in too often. Right, so this is a lady who's going to be absolutely brilliant um, in helping court politics and managing my domain. At the moment, I'm four of four. She gets me up to five, so that's good news. Um, we've put up a cis ruler at the moment, so we get a broad base of skills. Have we got a better... He's already a better high shaman, but we're going to have this lady as my high shaman. She is going to give us 0.75 a month, so that's a big improvement. Have we got someone who's better than four? Well, we have. He's not brilliant, but he's going to have to. He's going to have to do for now. We do have a much better chancellor, and that's great news. Commander-wise, he's still the best. Spymaster, we've now got Torogene to do our dirty work for us. Okay, next thing is to see are any other ways that I can build my prestige. Um, I can have a call a hunt. Right, why can't I have a feast? Just short of gold. Well, that's relatively easy to, to sort out. So this is going to reduce my stress. We're not stressed anyway. It's going to give me, hopefully, quite a bit of prestige. While I'm waiting for that prestige to come in, what am I going to improve in size? Let's... Um, I think the pikemen, because there's a lot of light horsemen out here in this part of the world, and that will be a good uh, counter. Can I afford a, a men in arm, men at arms? I think you've got to go for it, haven't you? So we, we, we spot a bear. Uh, presumably this is going to be risky. I can back out, but I don't want to be losing 75 uh, prestige. I'm young. I'm, uh, I'm up for becoming greatest of Khans. We'll take the extra 75 and we'll take the chance of what's going to happen. Just suddenly occurred to me that I should really be um, swaying somebody. And the most obvious person to sway... Do you know what? I'm going to sway my wife because if I can get her... If I can later on romance her, so let's get her let's get her to like us first, and then we'll look about romancing her for extra prestige later on. Gotta go for the extra 75. So already got uh, my, uh, my the my uh, wife is pregnant, so that's that's good. It looks like I've got an heir on the way. Gained 150. That means that altogether I gained 300 on that hunt. Very, very good. Oops. First thing I'm going to do now is just have a look to see whether I can improve my military at all. I'd love to have this go up to size three. Uh, sorry, size two. Um, and all together, by the, when, this, when these guys have been built, this is going to be a fantastically well-balanced, powerful army. It'll be able to sweep anything out of the way. I am going to wait, though, until it's, uh, it's built up. Starting to see my uh, commanders improving. Also, if we have a look at my council, we can see that at the moment uh, they're already um, at 5% increase. It'll go all the way up to 18 because that's his, his martial skill. So um, while we're waiting, this is fine. We're becoming stronger all the time. OK, so I have an heir. Um, young, well, what are we going to call him? Well, I, I don't have any other patrons, so I can't name him. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to name him. Uh, actually, let's 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 take um, after an ancestor. Tom. Uh, Jacker. Okay, I like Jacker. Okay, so may he grow strong, and we will educate him ourselves. So we got a promising new recruit. Um, he's got sixteen. Uh, he looks, certainly looks like a promise. He's a bit of a drunkard. This isn't great, um, and he would be a perfectly good military commander, especially. Uh, against other faiths so we're going to go to war with other faiths so if I decide not to be not to take too many chances with my own life he might be a good commander will certainly accept uh, certainly accept this guy this guy's only three he's not no, he's not going to be amazing uh, he's got nine prowess but he will be our fourth best knight right off the bat um, and he will push out um, Buyan, who is our weakest uh, bag of tour at the moment, and so it will improve our overall score by three for the team. So we've just got to full strength. It's the 3rd of December. Now I've got two choices here. Um, I'm gonna do, I, I, I want to test my army out on raiding 
into the Carnate's uh, realm. Um, it'll have to be quick. It'll have to be like in and out. But there's no point in doing it yet. I think we've got a war. We can afford the war. We can't afford the war. We don't have enough prestige for it. We need some more prestige. So we're going to go a raiding. To be clear, so we've got 15 there. We've got 15 there. To be absolutely clear, they will destroy us if we're not quick. Okay. I am going to lead this myself because I am quick. I'm not even my best marshal anymore. Okay, I'll lead it. If it looks like a battle, I'll swap over. I'm going to slow this down a little bit. How big is this army? Okay, right, swap commanders. I think they'll catch us, but let's have... Uh, that's the advantage of being so quick. Are we going to get away? I think we're going to get away. They're still going to, we're still going to end up with a fight. We're going to get much for this lady. Right, let's raise all here. So we should win this handily. Really testing out our army. Should get some money for this guy. Right, we might hang on to him for a bit. In the second battle, we also absolutely destroyed them for a very, very small cost. And it is the horse archers after the bag of tours that are having that, uh, that big effect. We're not going to push our luck at the moment. We've got enough prestige now to go to war. So it's the 1st of June. The summer's beginning properly. Um, our force is back to full strength. We've got a huge amount of prestige. We can... I think we can afford to, to, to pay to go to war against, um, against this guy, which is the best of the three. Kind of looking for pe people who've already investing in buildings. Okay, no. Right. So, I have got the county of uh, Dowria. I am the duke and I own all four counties there. I will be able to have uh, one, perhaps two... Um, well, by the time I become a king, I'll be able to have um, another one. So what I'm going to be aiming for is taking one of the one of the duchies that has only two counties, which is either Baigulis or the Uda Valley. But the uh, the Uda Valley is is down here in this uh, this huge empire. I'm going to make those my uh, my duchies as well. So I want to start kind of like kind of working on that relatively soon. But there's only two counties, in, so I guess I guess basically Baigulis. Again, if you can see that, Bygulis is going to be the one, but uh, the other one that's going to be me. Now, I make these up all the time when I when I start a playthrough, um, and um, and they are available for download uh, for uh, for patrons. Um, go and have a look. Very easy to make them up yourself, though. You obviously don't need to be a patron to to do this. But what it help does is it helps me to keep track of where, who I'm intending to give dukedoms to and indeed counties. Now Cotter, and obviously I can't make anybody a duke uh, in the near, until I become a king because they become independent, but I'm planning to give Cotter, which is this dukedom here, uh, sorry, sorry, I beg your pardon, Bargujin Tukum, I'm planning to give that to my best counsellor, um, which is of course my chancellor, uh, Bullion. So if I take a county in any of the, in this area, and I'm above my limit, then I'm going to give it to um, to him. Let's give put her back on assist ruler. 